I'm Micah Smith, and in today's quick tip, we're going to look at conditional statements. Now, conditional statements are one of the, you know, I would say primary building blocks of programming. And I don't want anyone to run away from this or get scared by me saying that, but it's really just about problem solving. And this is stuff that you, I'm sure you already understand. So conditional statements basically allow us to say, I only want to execute code if a particular condition is true, right? If that condition is not true, I don't want that code to execute. So let's look at creating some of these on our bot and we'll just take a look at how these work. Conditional statements in programming are represented by if statements. So if we come down to the if package, I'm going to drag an if condition over here, right? And it allows me to execute the code inside of this block only if this condition is actually true. So let's set something up here. I'm going to go up to my variables and I'm going to hit the plus sign so I can create a new variable. I'm going to create a number variable. So I'm going to prefix it with a lowercase n. I'm going to call it um, sample number, n sample number. Uh, fun fact, that's called Hungarian notation, where you're actually using the um, data type as a part of the variable name. All right, so there we go. I've got a sample number. I'm going to set it to the value of five. Okay, and I'll hit create. So when my process runs, that value is automatically set to the value of five. Now with my conditional statement, I'm going to go over here to the properties. There's lots of different stuff that I can do here, right? I can have conditional statements based off the presence of a file, based off the result of a true, fal uh, true false analysis. I could have it work off of data tables or dictionaries or things like that. What we're gonna do for our example, just to keep it really simple, because we're focusing on conditional statements, is the number condition. So when I'm checking for this condition, right, I'm checking for this to be true. So I'm gonna say, is my source value, and I'm gonna hit F2 here so I can insert a variable and we'll select n sample, n sample number. And we're gonna say for our operator, let's say greater than. And for our target, let's say four, right? So our condition there is saying, is that variable, which we have as five, greater than four? We'll hit save. And then I'm gonna add a message box in here just so we can see what happens, right? So I'm gonna drag a message box and we'll just say, condition is true. Perfect. And let's run that. Now, because we just talked about what that variable is, and we just talked about what conditional statements are, you should hopefully know that what's going to happen here is we should see that message box pop up. And the message box should just say, hey, the condition's true, because the code evaluated our conditional statement and found that the statement was true. Now, let's change our conditional statement real quick to see what happens in the opposite case. So I've got my conditional statement here. Let's change this to five. So now this would read, is five greater than five? The answer there is actually no, right? Five is not greater than five. So in this case, what's gonna happen is my conditional statement will execute. We're still gonna try to see if that evaluates to true. If it doesn't, notice that it just said my bot ran successfully, right? Basically, the focus of my code came down here, it checked for that conditional statement, and then it went straight past it, right? Because the condition was not true, the code inside of this is not actually going to execute. Now, with conditional statements, I also can set up things like an else clause here. So I'm going to grab else over here. And this allows me to have something else execute if this condition is found to not be true. So let's add another message box. And let's here say the condition is false, else block executed. Okay. So now what's going to happen? My bot's going to run, right? We're going to check in that first conditional statement to say, is five greater than five? The answer is no. So the focus of our code comes over here to that else block. Whatever code is in the else block executes. And here we have our message box that says the condition is false. The else block has been executed. Perfect. Hopefully you're sticking with me so far. The last thing we want to talk about here is else if statements. So I'm going to drag an else if statement right in between the two of these, right? So what I'm saying now is in this first column, I'm checking to see is five greater than five. If that's not true, I'm going to go over to the next if statement or the next conditional statement that I have nested here, right? And so what we're going to look for here, we'll check for another number condition. 
And again, I'm gonna press F2. We're gonna fill in our source value, which is in sample number. And I'm gonna say greater than, um, let's say four this time, right? And for message box, we'll put this over here. Let's just say uh, else if executed number is greater than four. Cool. Now, before we run this, what message box or boxes would you expect to see here, right? Our number is still five. So our first conditional statement is saying, is that greater than five? Our next conditional statement here is saying, okay, if else, meaning, okay, if this one's not true, then I'm gonna come here and check for this condition. Here we're saying, is five greater than four, right? That's another statement that we're evaluating. And then finally, we have this else block here, right? So the reason I point the three of those out is because we wanna understand that when we have an if statement like this, right, where we have these multiple else ifs and even an else condition at the very end, only one of them would ever execute, okay? So here we see it says else if executed number is greater than four. At that point, the bot is done, right? So it's not gonna say, okay, I'm gonna run this one and then also run the else. It's only going to run whichever one of these is true, right? And if neither of these two are true, then this one gets executed by default, okay? So that's how conditional statements work. I would encourage you to understand how you can use conditional statements in some of your bot logic. It allows you to determine what should happen if, hey, the data I read from this field wasn't correct, or the validation that I filled in for this one particular piece of data wasn't there, Excel data was missing from my spreadsheet. Lots of different things you can do with conditional statements so that your bot can respond accordingly. This has been Quick Tips. My name is Micah Smith. Go be great.